Let's talk about obstructive shock using the pump from a blood pressure cuff. So if we imagine that this pump represents our left ventricle, blood is gonna come in one end, the muscle's gonna squeeze, and then blood is gonna come out the other end, okay? Now, in obstructive shock, there's gonna be something which physically impedes that process in some way, okay? So we might have a tension pneumothorax or a pulmonary embolism, which are gonna reduce our venous return, right? So blood is gonna have a hard time coming in. In attention pneumothorax, we've got those increased intrathoracic pressure squeezing down on our vena cava. Or in a pulmonary embolism, we've got a physical blood clot, which is stopping blood flow through the pulmonary vasculature coming back into the left ventricle, right? So how does that look? Well, if we imagine that our left ventricle squeezes and then there's, the, then there's an obstruction. Now, this is obviously a little bit exaggerated, but in this case, if there's an obstruction, the ventricle can't refill, okay? And that's our physical obstruction causing our obstructive shock. Now, another example might be something like a pericardial effusion or a cardiac tamponade. Now, in this case, you imagine that there's the pericardium around the heart, right? If that fills up, when the blood sort of exits the heart, if there's a physical obstruction around it, it can't refill properly, right? And if it can't refill properly, then it can't squeeze as hard on the next contraction or, or not as much blood can come out if there's not as much blood coming in. Right, and then the last example is something like aortic stenosis. So if there's a physical obstruction at the end, right, so the, the valve in between your left ventricle and your aorta, if that's really stiff and blood can't come out, then no matter how hard you squeeze, the blood's, not, the blood's gonna have a really difficult time coming out. The verdict is out. You love our short videos. And so we want to do something special with them and make them into something that really can enhance you as a practitioner. So we've taken our short videos and we've created four new short video continued education courses around our short videos. So now you can take our short videos in course form as one and two year members and continued education members so that way you can get credits and become a better practitioner learning in bite-sized pieces. And you can get started right now at the link in our bio.